Previously, we talked about velocity. And I alluded to the fact that velocity was often not constant, but was changing. So let's talk about that change in velocity. And that leads us to the concept of acceleration. Acceleration is how quickly you are speeding up or slowing down in a particular direction. It could also be how quickly you are changing directions, but that's a lesson for another time. I think everybody has an intuitive understanding of acceleration. If you want to speed up, you step on the gas. If you step on the gas, you are going to increase your velocity. But what also is an acceleration is if you put on the brake. Because if you put on the brake, you're slowing down. And if you're slowing down, you're also changing your velocity. Now, some physics purists will say that speeding up is acceleration and slowing down is also acceleration. And that is true. But we can physically interpret slowing down as being a deceleration. And sometimes we will interpret it and we'll refer to it that way. So while an acceleration can be speeding up or slowing down, realize that a deceleration is always going to be slowing down. So just like what we did with velocity, now that we've defined the term, let's take a look at mathematically how it's expressed. And we can say that acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So we will have a greater acceleration if we have an increased velocity for the same change in time or if we have a decrease in time for the same change in velocity. We can also manipulate our equation just like what we did for velocity. And in this case here, we can say that acceleration multiplied by the change in time is equal to my change in velocity. And again, this is probably more real world how things operate. We don't have an acceleration because we have a change in velocity but well, we have a change in velocity because we have an acceleration. And again, we can say that if we have an increased acceleration for the same period of time, we're going to have a greater change in our velocity. Or if we have a greater change in time for the same acceleration, we will also have a greater change in our velocity. So when we talk about acceleration, we can talk about one runner. And if that runner starts to speed up, then she's going to have an increase in her acceleration. If that same runner starts to slow down, she is also going to have an acceleration, but the acceleration vector is pointing in the opposite direction of her direction of travel. So let's explore this idea a little bit more closely. Again, we say that we have body A's position at one point in time, and they're traveling along that particular dimension but at another point in time where we have our second position. So here we have a certain velocity at the first time point. At the second time point, that body sped up. That means that we had to have had an acceleration that was in the direction of travel. And notice that we know that we sped up because we have a longer arrow. So if we start with a smaller velocity, and we end up increasing our velocity, we had to have an acceleration that was in the direction of travel. And in this particular case, we are going to say that that acceleration was positive. Now, let's say that we have a certain velocity, and another point in time we have a smaller velocity than we had initially. That means they had to have slowed down. If they slowed down, that acceleration had to be opposite of the direction of travel. See how it's pointing backwards. Or in this particular instance, it's going to end up being negative. And in the next lesson, we'll talk more about positives and negatives. But just realize that if we are speeding up, we had to have an acceleration. And that acceleration had to have been in the direction of travel. And if we are slowing down, we had to have had an acceleration. And in that case, that acceleration had to be opposite of the direction of travel. Now let's go ahead and let's take those two different velocities and let's put those on a vertical axis. 
and let's put time on a horizontal axis. And once again, you should be throwing the red flag. You should be saying, wait a minute, just like a body can't be in two different positions at the same time, a body can't have two different velocities at the same time. You cannot be going 30 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour at the same time. So we have to take that velocity at time prime and we have to adjust it to time prime. Now we're going to do just like what we did with our position time curve and we're going to draw a straight line that goes from the first velocity to the second. And here we can say that that slope now represents the acceleration. Because remember, the slope is the change in the vertical dimension divided by the change in the horizontal dimension. Well, in this case, we have our velocity divided by our time. And so now you can see how graphically and mathematically the two align with each other. The slope is going to be the change in velocity or the change in time, which is actually our mathematical equation for acceleration. Now, what happens if we actually slow down? Now, in this case here, our velocity at time point prime is going to be smaller than what that velocity was previously. Well, we still draw a straight line that goes from the original velocity to the new velocity. In this case, though, you see that our slope is now going to be pointing downward. That's a negative slope. Think about slopes as being walking on a hill. If you're going uphill, that's a positive slope. If you're flat, that's a zero slope. And if you're going downhill, that's a negative slope. So in this case here, we have a negative slope. That negative slope for this particular instance, in this particular instance only, shows that we are now going to be slowing down. Why is that? Well, if we look at it, v prime is smaller than v, so that means we are going to have a negative number up there in the numerator. So once again, the math and the graph are going to be aligned with each other. So again, if we speed up, we see that we have a positive slope, and if we slow down, you see that we have a negative slope. So acceleration is the slope of the velocity time curve. What that also means is that the change in velocity is the area under the acceleration time curve, much like what we saw when we talked about velocity and position. So if I have an acceleration time curve, the area under that acceleration time curve is my change in velocity. And again, recall the equation that it said acceleration times the change in time is equal to the change in velocity. Well, that is just an area. That's a base times a height. In this case, the base is the change in time and the height is the acceleration. Now this only holds if that acceleration ends up being constant. If the acceleration is changing, then we have to look at different equations to find the area under the curve, such as in this case, if we have a rectangle, the area is one half the base times the height. Now let's talk quickly about jerk. Jerk is not in the book yet, but it will be in the next edition. Jerk is actually going to be the change in acceleration divided by the change in time. So that is going to represent how quickly our acceleration is changing. There are other derivatives that we can talk about after jerk, which believe it or not, are called snap, crackle, and pop, which whomever came up with that must have been a Rice Krispies fan. But for our purposes, we are going to stop at jerk. So there you have some of the basics around acceleration and jerk.